Today is the first Sunday of the month of Kiyak, the month of incarnation, where we prepare to receive the Lord Jesus Christ incarnate and born, uh, and, and the Logos of God, the Word of God, to be born in us and in our lives, to make a change and to give the peace and everything that was promised through His coming. But before His coming, there is preparation and there is something that is needed for His coming. And that was clear through the readings today. And the main reading, which is the Gospel, spoke about Zacharias, a good priest in the days of the Lord, and his Elizabeth, his wife, and both of them were almost perfect people. But they had a problem. They had a problem that they didn't have a child. And children in the Old Testament uh, were a sign of blessing. And the lack of them is a sign of the lack of blessing and the lack of God's approval to these people, especially if they are priests, because priests, priesthood back then was only from one family, the family of Aaron. So he will be a priest, his son will be a priest, if he has no children, then as if God is not accepting him and his service, and he has no children. And Zacharias had this problem. And as you know, the angel finally appeared to him when he's an old man and told him, your prayers are heard. And good news, you will have a son. And he said, it's too late. I'm very old, my wife is too old, we can't. And this is the key here, that in order for us to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to have a preparation. And this preparation is our faith. We need him, we need some faith to receive him, and we need him to grow our faith. And I will explain that. First of all, when, when we say the word faith, what does it mean? What does the word faith mean? Because the word faith is misused a lot. Is it being optimistic? Is it really feeling something and feeling God and feeling that he's around? What is the, what is the word faith? And what is faith? And how do I know if I have faith or not? And what does it take to increase the faith or to decrease the faith? A lot of times we think that if we see a vision, if we see a vision, if the heavenly things and the spiritual things will become seen, we will believe. And today the gospel proved that wrong. Because the angel appeared to Zacharias, and he told him, good news. He said, no good news, too late. Okay, so it doesn't mean that when you see, you will believe. Many, many times things happened, and people saw things, and they did not believe. Uh, Pharaoh, for example, he saw many of the miracles of God, and he did not believe. Remember the story of Abraham and uh, Lazarus, when, when they both died, and one was in, in paradise and one was in hell. And the rich man from hell said, can you send someone to my brothers to warn them so they might not come to this place of torture? And then Abraham answered him, they have Moses and the prophet. What is Moses and the prophets? The Old Testament is usually referred to by Moses and the prophet because the, the first five books are written by Moses and the rest are the prophets. So basically they have the Bible. So the rich man said, no, but if someone rises from the dead, they will believe. And Abraham said, if they do not believe Moses and the prophet, even if one rises from the dead, they will not believe. I've seen people uh, uh, who have been healed, taken out of bad humongous accidents safely that they completely forget about it in just a few years, if not few months or few days. It's not that. 
It's not when I see, I will believe, but it's the exact opposite. It's when I believe, I will be able to see and understand everything. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, without faith, no one can please him, or uh, you can never please him without faith. And the exact translation for that, without faith, you can never understand him. Never understand God. That's why a single miracle happening to someone can never, ever, ever increase his faith, believe it or not. It can give him a boost. It can give him a spiritual push. And that's what happened when we get a promotion and the things that we prayed for. It pushes us for a few days, a few months, at the most few years. But we go back. Why? Because that incident will never build our faith. What is faith then, and what builds the faith? Faith, believe it or not, is logic. Is your logic system, your belief system. And our logic system is based on things in this world. I know exactly when I do this thing, I will get this result. This is called logic. If you add this, one plus one equal two. I understand that. If you have five loaves and two fish can feed one people, uh, you know, one person, two people, you know, five at the most, if they really, really share, and they're skinny, you know. But if you, you cannot feed 5,000 men plus women and children, that's, that's not logic. That's illogical. The logic of faith is a logic that's not according to this world, but logic according to God. What is the logic according to God? Logic is the Greek word called logos. What is the logos? The word. The word of God himself. Those who have faith, who understand God, his ways, what pleases him, how he works in every instant and situation, they go by the logic of God, not by the logic of the world. They have the mind of Christ. They have the principles of the kingdom of God, which is the exact opposite of the principles of this world. What does it take to change your logic system? A lot. Because it needs you to change everything you believe in. From believing in, you know, give you some examples. Logic of the world, if you give away money, you'll have less. But the logic of the kingdom, the more you give, the more you become rich. Some people live that, understand this logic, saw it, experienced it. That's why it's very easy for them to give. Some people never had this logic. All their lives, one plus one equal two. The more you get, the more you're blessed. In order to change that, it's very, very hard. Extremely hard. I can believe in God in everything except this point. Why? Because my logic system is completely different than the logic of the kingdom of God. So God wanted to change every logic we have according to his logos, according to his word, according to his ways. And that's how we understand him and understand his ways. Today in the Catholic epistle, epistle it was said, James 1, count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces produces patience. The testing of your faith produces patience. Some people are raised in a house. When the testing of my faith comes, why, God, are you doing this to me? They learn exactly 
how to respond, self-pity. God is like a, a difficult manager and, you know, is, is like pushing me too hard. So need to change this logic, this logic system. That the testing of your faith produces patience. Some people, very, very, very few, when they get into trouble, they learn from early on in their days. When I'm pressed, when I'm pressured, <clears throat> excuse me, then God is doing something wonderful in my life. God is growing me. God is blessing me. After this part in James 1, he says, But anyone who lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and he will be given. A big part of the lack of our faith, or the weakness of our faith, if we say, is our, we live by the logic of this world, and we have the title of Christians. But the same logic of the world is inside of us. That's why we get the same reaction when things happen to us. Because we don't have this logos of God, the logic of God, the word of God built and embedded into our system. How do I build my faith then? Then I need to adopt the word of God. Not because I need to learn the Bible. I need more from the word of God. But I need the logic of God. I need the Logos to dwell in me. I need my response to be the response of Christ. His thoughts, His ways, His will. One of the things that a lot of times we don't understand, we get confused about, what is God's will? How do I know God's will? And this is a very common question. And we try to explain, you do this and you do that, and you pray and you read the Bible and you ask some get some guidance and, and, and all of this, wonderful. But that's exactly giving directions to someone who's blind. Go left and then right and the second right and the second left. But if I have this, his knowledge, his word, his ways, his will inside of me, I should know it. I shouldn't be able to, uh, I don't need to question and, and ask many, many things. How? Do I know God's will? God's will is part of his character, part of his logic, his logos. Good news is we are waiting for that logos to come and be incarnate in my life. He wants to come and fill the mind. He wants to come to replace my logic system. But guess what? Your logic system, there is a, a weak area in it where you really don't trust God much. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's family. Maybe it's career. There is an area where, like Zacharias, Zacharias, give all your money, no problem. Serve God beginning to end, no problem. Get some sickness, no problem. Zacharias, you'll get a son. Uh, I mean, I prayed for that so long, I didn't get anything. Oh, okay. Zacharias, you have a fasting. But not fasting from food. Fasting from talking. Keep quiet for some time. That God may change your logic in this area. And replace it. And that's why we're fasting. In order to replace the logic of the world with the Word of God incarnate in me, specifically in the area where I trust Him least. Because that's where I'm crippled in my spiritual life and not necessarily growing in that. So let's invite the Logos, the Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, to come and change my logic system and be my logos, be my logic, heavenly one, spiritual one, that overcome the earthly logic and the worldly logic 
that the children of God would never work by the logic of this world, but beyond that, not by their own power, but by the power of the Logos, the Word of God, who wants to come and be incarnate in them. It's your chance before Christmas to know where is that weak area and do the silence thing or do the fasting thing, which is waiting for him to come and fix that particular area of my lack of faith, which makes me always confused, doubting, not knowing where to go. I know everything in my life except this area. So it's, it's time to give that up to him and, and to let him touch and heal that and put his word, his logos, instead of my logic. Glory be to God forever and ever.